Hey everyone, I'm Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and as you can see, I'm somewhere a little bit different today and I've brought some friends along with me too. Let's do this. So to start with, I've got Paul, AKA Squirrel, for anyone out there who doesn't know uh, who he is. Hi, I'm Paul, uh, otherwise known as Squirrel. I run a YouTube channel and a Twitch live stream, and I focus on simulation gaming. So that's racing, flying, trucking, that kind of thing. I'm here today because I want to build a new machine that can cope with not just gaming, high performance simulation gaming, uh, but also cope with recording and live streaming at the same time. And uh, I've also brought along Dave from AlphaCool. Hey folks, I'm Dave from AlphaCool. But what I'm here for this time is to build Paul's computer with the help of Andy. Now, we go with water cooling and obviously AlphaCool's a water cooling brand. I've built Paul's previous two computers, so we thought, let's get me back on. Now I've got a job within the industry, we can get the free gear. So uh, let's build him another PC. So obviously we've got the Lian Leo 11 Dynamic XL. So the O11 Dynamic XL, uh, I've actually built in the non-XL version and the reason why it was one of the most popular cases of kind of 2018, 2019 was how easy it is to build in it. They're just spot on for water cooling, especially the XL you've got, I think it's three 360 radiator support, which yep. is... Yeah, top, bottom and obviously yeah, the kind of front side, side yeah, yeah. which is just crazy for a case this big. Straight away I know we'll probably use two radiators for this build, put one at the bottom, one at the top and it means you get a through flow of air. Perfect, well I think really we should uh, have a little look inside, take all the panels off and kind of get prepared ready to you know house all the other components that we got which we will obviously talk through because we've got some pretty high end stuff here. Yeah. So. <laughs> we have indeed. It's a beautiful looking case, like it's well built, it's got a lovely matte black finish and, and a glass side panel and a glass front panel and I think that kind of case will bring out the best in whatever you do inside. But yeah, it, look, it looks really good. I'm really impressed with it. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, the thing that Lee and Lee have always been, I guess, no, notorious for, if that's the right word, um, quality. It's always been, you know, their, their kind of standard, even going back years and years and years. So, Dave, are you kind of visualising how you want things to be? Yeah, um, the plan of action at the moment is to have a crossflow radiator at the top and a crossflow at the bottom, and that'll allow us to do kind of like a square loop. And yeah, hopefully, That'll work. So we've got, I guess, most of the major components that make up you know, part of a, a PC. So the first one's gonna be the motherboard. So we've got the ROG Crosshair 8 formula. Yet we also have the drive switcher Gen 4 as well. The difference between sort of Gen 4 to Gen 3 is really the speed. So we're trying to alleviate any bottleneck. We've got a 3950X, which is a 16 core 32 thread monster. Yep. Uh, you know, high frequency as well, 3.5 gigahertz, but it can boost up to 4.7. So really, storage is always gonna be a bottleneck. Not now, because we've got these I mean, a little bit insane. Two, two terabyte uh, <laughs> NVMe SSDs from Corsair. <laughs> yeah, we say that we have actually got some other drives as well because like we've sort of mentioned, Flight Sim. I think they're saying when that comes out, it's gonna be about 600 gig just for Flight Sim. So motherboard wise, you know, this is the creme de la creme, the, the best of the best. It's also a very nice looking motherboard. So the motherboard, um, the ROG Crosser 8 formula, beautiful looking board. The whole kind of chrome black mirrored look, it just looks amazing. So we've actually got some G-Skill memory. So G-Skill are probably the best in terms of compatibility with the AMD platform. Yeah. Uh, you know, they've been kind of screened and tested and things like that. And you know, it's no slouch either. This is 3600 megahertz memory. There's 32 gig of it across four slots. So we are going to be populating yeah. all four slots on this board. Cast latency 16. So, uh, you know, some really nice sort of bandwidth on there. And AMD, especially the X570 platform and the processor you're going for, loves, absolutely adores high speed memory. So yeah, I know I'm meant to be building this, but I think, you know, as, as the main kind of part of the, the build, we've got the processor, the 3950X. Now, obviously I know you've built a few computers yourself sort of over the years and, and things like that. It yeah. hasn't really changed too much. So when you actually look at the processor, there is a little golden arrow. 
and then as you look on here, there is a little arrow. So it's just a matter of lifting up the, uh, the arm, putting it in, and it will just kind of drop in. You don't want to force it in or anything like that. You'll, you'll sort of find that there's just a, a small sort of groove where you can sort of, there you go. Yes. I always like to just not put pressure, but hold it into place and just yeah. put it down. I just finished dropping it into the motherboard. It's kind of getting exciting now. You, you're kind of seeing it assembled slowly, but uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a great motherboard. It's going to look good. It's going to perform really well. The whole PCIe Gen 4 is going to absolutely fly, which is important, I think, because we're not going to hold that CPU up. So SSD-wise, obviously I mentioned we have got the MP600s from Corsair. So depending on the motherboard that you've got, there's different sort of areas that they go. Sometimes they're up by the first PCI Express slot and then one down at the bottom. Some have two slots, some have only one. Some have actually sort of three to four. You can see that we have two areas here. Yeah. So one actually slots into here, one actually slots into here. And then there's little standoffs because these drives do come in various different lengths. Gen 4 drives are obviously a lot hotter than Gen 3 drives and it's actually mainly down to the controller and yeah. not the actual chips themselves. So uh, let's get the other drive in and uh, get this cool. on. So we're on to the memory now. So we've got the G-Skill Trident Z Neo. Obviously we spoke about the speeds and the specs and stuff, 3600 megahertz. This processor is gonna love that. Yep. Obviously there is RGB, and I know you're not a massive advocate of RGB. You like it quite subtle, subtle yeah, yeah. Which I think that is, to be fair. Like That and the CPU block in close proximity, Yeah. you know, with some nice little subtle RGB colors going through, I think it'll look really nice. Yeah, let's get Dave back in. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so next job is we need to install the CPU block onto the processor. Now we're using AM4, so what you can get inside the box of the, with the CPU block is an AMD pack, which is nice. So they make that block and then give you different attachments depending yeah. on what you want to put it on. Exactly, yeah, so you get Intel attachments yeah. for Intel. Cool. And so it saves, if you want to swap sockets in the future, you can and keep yeah. the same block. It makes it nice and easy. The CPU block is going on, and this is the uh, XPX Aurora Edge from AlphaCore. This is uh, ARGB compatible, and it actually daisy chains with the GPU block, so you don't need multiple controllers. It'll just plug directly into the motherboard. Probably just as easy, if not easier, than having an air cooler. CPU block, however, zero stress, because everything's really low profile and just close to the board. And all you need to do is finger tight. You don't actually need to use um, a screwdriver for this. So I guess that's motherboard assembly done. Motherboard's done. Now we need to drop it in the case. Yes, let's. So I'm back with uh, basically the case. I wanna probably lay it down. This is gonna be the first, I guess, step of installing components into it. So um, typically line it all up and you will find because we have got that middle one with a notch, we kind of feel it sort of lock into place to a certain degree. And then we can just uh, look to screw the rest of them down. So uh, yeah, basically we have eight screws to put in. So GPU wise, that's probably one of the key segments of, of the build. So that's why we've got the 2080 Ti. Admittedly, it's a Strix edition, but we are sadly gonna be taking it apart and putting a water block <laughs> on it. I genuinely think NVIDIA cards are like the top of the game right now. 2080 Ti is obviously the next generation of that. It's got all the texture memory you need, 11 gig is plenty. It's got the new chipset in there for the NVIDIA encoding. It's got the performance, it's the overclocked version of, uh, of what Azus has done with it. They've just overclocked it out of the box, so I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. But there's a, a few key things with this card that's really going to help you, I think, like the 11 gig of GDDR6 memory. Particularly when you look at things like the new Microsoft Flight Sim that's coming out. Yep. I mean, the fact, as you say, I'm recording and I'm streaming at the same time. So that's why we went for such a high-end card. I can tell OBS to use the, the built-in chip, the built-in NVIDIA encoder, to, to handle the streaming. Yep. And then I can also tell OBS, encode for recording, because I want to put it on YouTube later, so encode that and use the CPU. And with the Ryzen, we'll have plenty of cores for it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I guess really what we need to do is we need to actually get Dave to strip this down and sort of show us how easy it is to fit a water block on there. So yeah, it needs to be stripped down and then uh, a water block put on there. And uh, that will, I guess, be the first key component to, to this custom loop that's going to yep. be going inside the system. Well, we'll hand over to the expert and let him get on with it. So, Dave, what have we got exactly and what are we going to be doing to this beautiful graphics card? Well, unfortunately, we are going to have to take the shroud off and the fans and everything, but we have got a rather nice looking Ice Block GPX. And yeah, this one's ARGB 
and you have actually got Strix branding on it, so they still know that it's a Strix. So you're not kind of fully taken away from, you know, this isn't a Zeus card, because generally when you put a water block on, you're not going to know whose card that is underneath. Yeah, At least exactly. that's. Yeah, so you will see that it's a Strix, because you've got to have that, you know, the show off, haven't you? That's what you want to do. Yeah, obviously we need to take this apart. Um, obviously, there is quite a few screws on here. It's one of the things oh, where yeah. you have to be organised. Well, I guess I'm going to leave you to it, and uh, yeah, good luck. Thank you. So, the first job is to remove all the screws on the back plate and the GPU so we can actually uh, get to the PCB. Then make sure, if you, when you're taking the GPU apart, make sure you don't just yank it apart. There's always fan cables and nowadays RGB cables and all that kind of guff. Once the uh, main fan trail has been taken off, we can then work on the screws on the actual PCB. And there's loads of these because, well, they want to make sure the PCB is secure and doesn't flex. So, the next job is to remove the thermal paste. Usually you want to use tin remover, but hey, we've got tissue. That's, that's all you need. As long as you haven't got any thermal paste left, you're all good. So that's that done. So inside this little box, we should have a load of little gubbins like screws and thermal paste, thermal pads and whatnot. One nice thing that you've got is when you get your thermal pads, they've got numbers on and also the manual has numbers on the thermal pads and it's quite like, as easy as it can be. The numbers go where the numbers tell you to put them. It's really simple. They're already pre-cut as well. So everything's nice and simple. So now the thermal pads are installed, you can put some tim on or some thermal paste. The thermal pads, all they do is basically close the gap between the, the parts that get hot and the block. It just closes that gap and makes everything uh, nice and cool, takes the heat away. The GPU on this is a big GPU, it's a big die. So what you want to do is put quite a bit on, more than you usually would for a CPU. The thing with, G with paste, is too much is actually better than not enough especially if the paste is non-conductive like this it will just squeeze out which isn't a problem if the paste is conductive like liquid metal or something like that obviously don't put too much on but non-conductive paste is fine people always say oh you put too much paste on that it doesn't matter the paste gets squeezed out it can only be so thin and once you put the pressure on the block it'll say a certain thickness that's just how it is it might be a bit messier, but if you've ever had GPUs and taken the fan shroud off, quite often from the factory they just cake it with thermal paste just to ensure that you get a good spread. Now this block just gets placed on, make sure everything lines up. And then a little trick for you is if you flip it over on top of a box like this, it means that the back panel actually goes off the box so you're not working on something that's completely wonky. It's so much easier to work with the plate off at the back. I'm really looking forward to you know what it's actually going to look like and I'm kind of hoping that Dave hasn't broken it. So while I was off camera I actually did a few little things. So I've actually sort of done all the kind of the main cables because they're a little bit boring. We didn't need to show everyone yeah. and um, for the most part all it is is you know connectors on the front so your USB, your uh, well, essentially your front I.O., so power button, reset button. What we're going to do with the SSDs, depending on where we're actually going to put the radiator, we may put them on the back of here, but if we put a radiator there, then we can't. So we're just going to maybe stick them to the back of the motherboard tray using sort of double-sided uh, sort of pads. What we've got to do now is actually get the GPU in. So I know, again, off camera, that they've managed to do some magic to use the existing backplate, uh, because it does look nice, and I yeah. think a lot better than the sort of generic PCB. Yep. So uh, we need to get that in there and then we're actually going to put the power supply in as well. But let's get the GPU in anyway. Yep. Um, so typically you've got your expansion slots here. Uh, just sort of looking at the GPU and where it lines up with the slot is going to be the second uh, slot down and the third slot. On say a cheaper case what you're actually find is uh, these aren't sort of reusable. 
So if you end up getting, say, a single slot GPU or a triple slot GPU and then going down to a dual slot, with the cheaper cases, once you snap them out, yep. you can't put them back. Yep. Whereas these, obviously, you can. So uh, During the days of having to push them out and then cutting your hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the problem. When they kind of use, you know, cheaper materials and things like that, that's kind of, yeah, what you end up with. So yeah, it's actually a really nice case to build in though. And you can see, now that the GPU's in, how much space we actually have sort of underneath. Yeah. Obviously, once the rad is in there with the fans on top, it's gonna come up, I think it's about 55 mil, 25 mil for the fans and then 30 mil for the rad, but it's still gonna have lots of clearance in that, which is really nice because it will allow the RGB to sort of shine and bounce off of everything. Yeah. And that's gonna look really cool as well. Nice. So power supply wise, we've got a bit of a weird one here because probably the best selling point of this power supply, you're never actually gonna see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to say. So basically with this power supply, it's the ROG Thor 1200 watt platinum. So it is an 80 plus platinum power supply, basically means the efficiency on this is absolutely fantastic. There's only one really above it and that's titanium. So uh, basically power going in versus power that's actually you know, being utilized and converted AC, DC onto uh, the power going to the motherboard yep. and the GPU. And uh, yeah, it actually tells you how many watts you're pulling on the side of it. On a little display. On a little display, Behind yeah. the case. Behind the case. I'm, <laughs> I feel really disappointed for you because it's, it really is a sight to kind of, you know, behold and everything, but still a really nice power supply in general. So what you've actually got on this power supply, the little sort of Owei uh, logo, the ROG logo, does light up and you could sync it with the rest of your motherboard. Mm -hmm. So with the CPU block on there, the GPU block that's all going to be sort of, you know, different colours, you could have that exactly the same, so it's cycling at the same time. So or... you connect that to the motherboard and then it can, it can tell yeah. it what colour. So uh, let's get the cables in and uh, see exactly what we need. Awesome. So, kind of day one done, it's 20 past six now. We've been going, I think we started about midday, something yeah. like that, so yeah. um, so we've got to flush the radiators tomorrow, yeah. um, mainly because of flux and yeah, things like just, that. Yeah, you get materials from uh, production that they're yeah. in. The last thing you want, even though you've got the satin tubes, um, you just don't want little flecks just kind of yeah, going around. Flying it, around. Especially because <laughs> you see it in the, uh, in the reservoir as well. Yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't look great. Yeah, so yeah, until, uh, until tomorrow, I guess. Mm. Rolling, rolling, rolling. What? Rolling, rolling, rolling. Uh, action. So it's another day. Uh, obviously, we've kind of got as far as I guess what I'm willing to do <laughs> with the PC because I'm actually going to be handing over to Dave. Sorry, Dave. No. It might be news to you, but uh, yeah, basically Dave is going to be. Sorting out the custom loop side of things. So do you want to tell us kind of what your initial plans are, what you want to do with it? Uh, I think first I'm just going to have a little play around just to see what can go where and have a look if I can think of some weird and wonderful ways to make it look a bit different. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to mess around. I've got a little bit of an idea just to try a parallel loop. Though yesterday we did the GPU and CPU block installation, so now we're doing the tubing for that. I'm going to go from the CPU down to the GPU twice and try a parallel loop. Um, if we do it like this, it's, it's it should be quite nice, it should be different. So all together, it's just a nice big square loop and um, that's in parallel, it should be really nice. Next, we're going to have to water cool this bad boy. With this case, we've got three different ways you can do the radiators, three different options, I should say, with the radiators. And I've actually brought a few different types of radiators with me. At the moment, I want to try and do parallel just because it looks prettier but we'll see how that goes as the build progresses. We've got a few tools with us today, which uh, one of the ones that I'm gonna be using a lot is the reamer. And the reamer is just a nice little tool and all it does is chamfers the edge of the tubing. The reason you do this is there's actually a sharp edge when you cut the tubing. It's like a, uh, it just naturally happens when you chop the tubing. And all you do is give it a few turns on the inside and give it a few turns on the outside and then that will shank for the edge and round it off. When you're doing a bend it's really simple to do. We've got a silicon tube and that just slides right inside of the tube that you want to bend. You don't have to go all the way like this, you can just go as far as the bend needs to be. And then you put on the heat gun and this is going to be a bit loud so I apologise. Now what you do is you hold it a couple of inches above and also spin it round whilst going back and forth. It does take some time to uh, be patient. It'll kind of uh, start getting malleable after a while. 
so you don't want to go too crazy, don't force the bend or anything like that. Just let like, go soft on its own. And now when you see it start to bend, just let like, bend under its own weight and then you can make the 90. We do have bending mandrels and um, we do have bending mandrels and things like that to help you to make a 90. But when you've got a computer case next to you, one of the things I do just quickly is just put it on and just eyeball it. So I know that's pretty much 90 degrees and it's a nice easy way if you don't have a man bending kit or don't have a mandrel it's a nice way of uh, getting a 90 with, without worrying too much. Cutting tubing is uh, really easy we're using acrylic tubing rather than PETG just because I really like the satin look and it's it's as easy as cutting anything. You pop it into a little uh, cutting little cutting uh, holder that we've got like a little mini vise and you just go nice and slow let the saw do the work and just keep on going until you're all the way through it's no nothing special there's no technique or anything like that there we go so then you cut all the way through and you're left with a cut so somebody thought it was a good idea to give dave a hacksaw and a heat gun but seriously, he's really good with this stuff. I've seen his work before. He's, he's, really, he's really skilled at it, actually. So I'm looking forward to seeing what happens over the next few hours. So we're basically there with the build now. Um, how do you think everything's looking? First off, I, I think it looks really good. Yeah, uh, it's very tidy, great build. So Dave, what have we got to do now? Obviously, we've got the tubing fitted. Yeah, tubing's done. Tubing's done. Everything else is ready. We're going to give it a quick just check each fitting, make sure everything's tight. Then it's fill it up and uh, fingers crossed, and pray to the water cooling gods. Yeah, <laughs> let's do this. So now that that's filled up, um, obviously we want to now power it on, uh, which is, as we mentioned, only going to power on the pump. It's going to start circulating through and just kind of keeping an eye, making making sure that things aren't leaking. Yeah, we'll get this filled up as well, because whilst it's powered on, we can potentially put more in and keep it running for longer. Yep. So if we've got if we've got the tissue as well, as my please. Yep, the wet tissue, because uh, obviously didn't need a funnel. Don't need funnel. Perfect, Dane. You don't need a funnel. What do you need a funnel for when uh, I can just soak your hand instead? See, a little tiny dribble. On no one important. Look at that. There we go. Right, so they've uh, they put all the tubing in, tightened everything up, and uh, Dave assures me that there's definitely going to be no leaks whatsoever because he's a professional, so there's no way it could ever leak. Um, so yeah, he's about to put the fluid in, and we'll find out for sure whether he's got any leaks or not. How are we looking on the fittings, Andy? Are you leaking good so far? Yep, everything's good. That's nice. So, we're ready. Yeah, it's uh, time to turn the pump on, see if it goes anywhere. Yep, obviously the main thing that we want to be looking at is the level that's actually in the reservoir, making sure that it doesn't get yeah, down. Yeah, if it goes below sort of here, you have to turn it off because the, the power does take a few yeah, it's, seconds. it's still going to gonna be sort yeah. of, yeah, pumping through. So let's do it. Yeah, like there, we've got a little leak. That just needs nipping up. Yep. But it's not a big leak. I just saw a little tiny dribble. And what we're finding by having two people, obviously you can carry on sort of filling it up uh, while I'm just sort of making sure everything else is okay. But yeah, so, so far we've just got this tiny little leak. So that just needs nipping up. And what it says is that will have turned around somehow when we've been messing with the tubing or similar. Everything else is looking. We've got another little one just here, really sort of slow leak. So again. Oh, it's here. It's, yeah, we've got one there. And that again just needs nipping up. So nothing, nothing major. We can sort them out and it's pretty much full. We'll just leave, we need to give it a shake and let the uh, let the air out, get out. But we'll just nip these two fittings up and that's it. Yeah.
So everything's done, the system's powered on. Yeah, I mean, oh, 3950X, yeah. <laughs> 2080 Ti, tons of memory, tons of storage. Yeah. I mean, what else could you really It's pretty want high end. Yeah. Just, just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> so there you go, yeah. Um, I'm just sad that we don't really get to take into the uh, load, but yeah. you know, we, we got the experience, I guess. Well, we could raid the Asus uh, warehouse, couldn't we? Not a bad idea. Let's do it. We are getting looks now, though, yeah. from, from the Asus <laughs> representative, should we say. Yeah. So there you go, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's been a bit of a long one, but uh, you know, I definitely think it's worth it. And let me know in the comments section if you think this is something that you'd like to see more of. You know, it's kind of unique content, should we say. Like I say, a little bit longer, but it's been worth it, definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, it's been a good laugh. Yeah. And you're happy? Yeah, I'm happy. That's the main thing. There you go, guys. We'll see you in the next one. See you later. Bye-bye.